Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to my January favorites. I decided for the year of 2022 that I would share a monthly favorites, not only to do with fashion, I'll include beauty, skincare, uh, possibly food, books, and even TV series. And that is what this video is going to be today because I've been enjoying so many things that I'm kind of like really excited to share with you guys. Now, if you like videos such as this, please make sure to give this video a good old thumbs up and let's get started. So I'm going to start with my hair, which is something that I've been really, really enjoying recently. Um, I do have my down days where I hate my hair, nothing looks good, none of the products work, but recently I have been really enjoying the process of styling and the washing and all of that jazz. So I'm going to start with the hairstyle that I'm actually wearing right now. And I absolutely adore it. Now I saw a girl on Instagram with curly hair doing a low bun. I'm pretty sure I've seen this before, but for some reason she sold me on the hairstyle and I loved it. This is what I've been rocking recently. I feel like it's very, um, easy to style because the bun is not too tight on my head and it always reminds me of the ladies back in the day. I remember when I was younger I used to see uh, the ladies in my neighborhood wearing low buns and I always thought it looked so nice but I never thought I would like it. So super easy to style and I think it looks quite chic and sophisticated especially if you do your baby hairs properly. I still struggle. Bear with me on that but I put a little bit of gel and Today is my seventh day, wash day, but my hair is still looking okay. So staying with hair, I have a shampoo and conditioner from Kerastase that I bought a few weeks ago, and I did feature these in a previous video where I straightened my hair. But I bought this purple uh, shampoo and conditioner from the Absolute line just to refresh my gray or silver hairs because sometimes they look very, very dull. Um, and I also wanted to take any brassiness away from using heat tools. And I'm happy to report that I actually really, really love it, especially the conditioner. It provides a lot of slip. I don't need to use a lot. Granted, these products are not a curly girl friendly, but I'm a big advocate if something works for you just use it if you prefer to use sulfate free and silicone free of course go ahead and buy products like that but if you find things that actually work for your hair then just use it and so far I've been loving these they don't strip any of the oils out of my hair and my silvers look a little bit brighter as well so the next products that I want to talk about is a vegan and cruelty free skincare line called Wild Mint. I've been using their products, I think for a year or almost a year. And right now I feel like I have the entire line and I really, really love them. But if I had to choose one particular product, it would have to be the Body Whip. I love, love, love this product. Now, Wild Mint, as I said, they are a vegan and cruelty-free line and or brand, better saying, and all of their products are pretty natural. So they have a really nice, faint, kind of like citrusy and mint scent that is very, very pleasant. And this product is absolutely amazing. Very, very moisturizing. I leave it in my bathroom. So every time I wash my hands, I moisturize my hands. If I see any bare skin, for example, my arms, my elbows, I use this product just to add that moisture. And I really love the scent as well. It makes my skin look glowy. And I also find that my skin stays moisturized for longer. And the entire line smells exactly the same. Amazing, amazing. So if you are interested interested in knowing a little bit more about them so stay tuned for a future video on these okay so next we're going to talk about makeup which is something that I wear at least four days a week and I have four products here that I want to talk about I'm going to start with the foundation this is the Dior forever skin glow this is the reformulated formula which was released at the beginning of the year the shade that I have is 2w and I remember wearing this foundation in the matte formula at least eight or nine years ago and as far as I can remember I used the entire bottle that's how much I liked it 
but this time I decided to try the glow version one because we're still in winter and two because I feel like matte foundations sometimes look a little bit too much like makeup and I want my skin to look a little bit glowy I'm in my mid 40s and skin is not like it was 25 years ago so I want something that provides me with medium coverage and gives me a, a nice skin glow to my overall appearance and this foundation definitely does that I've been wearing it every single day and one pump is enough to cover my entire face the blush that I've been loving as well is this one by NARS this is the Laguna blush and I've been loving this for a very very long time and I reach for this blush more than any other blush I have in my collection I'm pretty sure I've had this one for over a year and I've not hit pan yet and if I do and if I finish it I will be buying it again because it's such a beautiful peachy kind of like a glowy finish it's super pretty you don't need to add a highlighter if you don't want to because this does everything for you i also have a mascara from the drugstore that i've been loving this is my second tube this is the lift and define 50d lash extra dimension mascara mouthful from uh, makeup revolution you can find this at boots or a super drug I always buy mine as super drug so I'm not sure if boots actually carries this but I love 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 this it really makes my lashes look full look long separated not clumpy at all it doesn't smudge and I think I will be buying this continuously because it's such a good drugstore mascara under nine pounds, highly, highly recommend. Such a good, good one. Um, my last beauty product that I wanna talk about is something new to my beauty collection. It's the lipstick that I'm actually wearing and it's also by NARS. This one is called Rita. A lot of you guys always ask me which lipstick I'm wearing and then I forget to put it down there in the description. But yeah, this is the lipstick I've been wearing recently. I love it so, so much. It has a velvety finish. So it's not matte, although it dries matte after a while, but it's not uncomfortable to wear. You know how some matte lipsticks can be very, very drying on the lips and you can barely move. With this one, I'm not saying that it has a matte finish because I've never read the description, but it has a velvety application and feel on the lips and it's very, very opaque. And I feel like it's my perfect red. I've been trying to find one for a very long time. And this one just hits or ticks all the boxes. It's, it's a nice red, it's opaque, and it has kind of like a warmer undertone, so I know I can wear this the entire year. So my next favorite is going to be kind of like a random one. It's going to be a Netflix series that I've been obsessed in the past couple of weeks, and I'm, I've been binge watching, and it's Downton Abbey. I am so late to the party. Um, I think this series started, what, maybe two, three, maybe four years ago, I'm not entirely sure but I love them, love the whole family, love the drama, and my favorite two characters is Violet and Isabel. Their chemistry is amazing. Um, Violet is very, she has a really nice heart, but she's a madam, so she, she deals with things differently, and she has such a sense of humor. What she says is so sarcastic, but it just makes me laugh. I think maybe if I didn't live in the UK, I wouldn't fully understand her sense of humor. But since I've been living here for 15 years, or it's going to be 15 years, I understand uh, where she's coming from when she says things. And I love period series, uh, documentaries. I love to, to hear about British history. It really intrigues me and I, I, I feel very passionate about it. And Going back to the series, Isabel, she is a very black and white type of person. She likes everything done correctly. She is very giving. Uh, she has a, a, a huge heart and she loves Violet. Um, and Violet loves her, but they never say anything to each other, but that's kind of like their relationship. So tell me in the comments below if you like Downton Abbey, who are your favorite characters? For me right now, my favorite character are these two. I have cried my eyes out, especially when Sybil died. I was crying. I was like, why is this happening? But yeah, I love Downton Abbey. So let me know what your Netflix uh, favorite series is or anything that you like to watch. 
Okay, so moving right along, I'm going to talk about scents. And these two scents here are from Zara. The one is for the body, and this one is for the hair. And they're called Vativeur Pompomousse. That is the scent. And these are Jo Malone for Zara. As you well know, Jo Malone, their perfumes are very, very expensive. Something small like this can cost you 60 pounds. Whereas when you go to Zara, they cost between, I think, $5.99, depending on the size, all the way to 20 pounds, I think. I think I paid 20 pounds for this one. I can't fully remember, and it's 90 mLs. I absolutely love, love, love this scent. And I feel like this is my fourth or fifth purchase of this particular bottle. Because it's not super expensive, I overwhelm myself with the perfume. It has this beautiful, it's citrusy and flowery at the same time, but it's not a sweet scent, it's fresh. I don't like sweet scents, I find them very overwhelming. Um, and I decided to buy the hair spray as well just because I wanted to try it. Not that I spray a lot of stuff on my hair, but when my hair is kind of like, like this and it's not clean because it's my seventh day, I will spray this on my hair just to give a nice scent. Really love them and highly recommend if you're looking for something that, or you've been trying to get a perfume from Jo Malone and you're not sure if you're going to like it. I'm not saying that these ones smell exactly the same as a Jo Malone perfume would, but I know that Jo Malone is quite expensive, so maybe try these ones out. You may like it. Okay, guys, so now we're going to talk about jewelry, which I feel I've not spoken about in quite some time. Although you always see me wearing some type of jewelry in my videos, which I do, um, and I also wear it on a day-to-day -day basis, I've been kind of like obsessed with the same style of jewelry or the same pieces for the past few weeks, and I don't really change it all that much. When I really like something, I stick to them. So I'm going to start with the rings that I'm actually wearing. Wearing. These are from Monica Venadier. They are a stackable ring set and they're called Dea. And I just love the simplicity, but at the same time, they have a lot of detail. Now you can wear them, of course, stackable rings as the name suggests, but I tend to just spread them throughout different fingers or sometimes I wear them only on one finger. I really, really love the tone of the gold. Um, and like I said, the simplicity is right up my street because it's what I like to wear. I like simple jewelry. And Monica Venadier just makes amazing and beautiful pieces. I have a few bracelets as well. This one is the Corda uh, bracelet, which is so cute. I never thought I would like something like this because I buy bracelets in this style for my daughter where you just pull the strings to make it tighter. But I really love wearing this next to my watch, which I will be talking to you guys in a second. But this one is super pretty. I also have another two on my left wrist or left arm, which I really like. So I'll start with this one over here because it's a different type of bangle. It's not your usual rounded bangle, which is called the Neura reef bangle. Um, as I said, it's not your typical rounded one. It has kind of like an angle. It's really pretty and different and very simple at the same time, but because the design is slightly different than your average one, I think it stands out a lot more. Then we have this gorgeous one right next to it, which to me looks very, very vintage. This one is called the Doina Wide Bracelet. As I said, it looks quite vintage and I really love it. I tend to wear this a lot on its own, but a lot of the times I wear both of these two together. Um, I think they still look very nicely together, although the design is quite different. And even if I wanted to put all three in the same arm, it would still look amazing. Next, I wanna talk about my favorite watch at the moment, which is from Nord Green. You guys know I wear Nord Green all the time, but this is my go-to at the moment. And it's funny to me because I always go for all over gold type of watches, but I like the fact that this one, the gold is kind of like just in the middle and everything else is silver. I actually think it goes really well with the rest of my jewelry. It goes well with my outfit, especially now at the moment, which I'm really into gray tones. I feel like this watch fits the purpose so well. It's beautiful, it's quite simple. This one is the Philosopher with 
the five links, if I'm not mistaken. I'll leave all of the links for you guys below. But yeah, this is my go-to watch at the moment and I love it very, very much. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about fashion. And outerwear for me in the winter is super duper important. I have two that I've been really loving because they protect me from the cold and at the same time they also are quite stylish. But I'm only going to mention one today and it's this gorgeous wool coat from Mango. Now this coat is not current season so I'll link something similar below. This one is from 2020 if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they have a version which is lighter in tone and they have different tones um, on their website. Hopefully I'll find something for you guys. But I really, really love this coat and I have been reaching for it a ton in the past few weeks, uh, especially when the weather's dry. It's very, very nice and cozy. It's kind of like heavy, like the material is fantastic. It's quite long and I tend to wear it open. Unless it's windy, I tend to use the belt and close it because of course I don't want to feel cold. But the quality of this coat is amazing. I just wish that it was lined because I have to be very careful with what type of knitwear I'm wearing so it doesn't bubble up. I have definitely gotten my cost per wear out of this coat because I have been reaching for it time and time again. Last year I reached for it, this year I'm doing the same thing. So I think it was a great, great investment. I would absolutely love that next year they bring maybe a camel shade because I think the camel shade would be something that I would gravitate towards a lot. Next, I have two cardigans that I've been quite obsessed with. And to be honest, I am really loving cardigans, especially the oversized, somewhat shorter or cropped look. It's kind of like my thing at the moment. This one is from Uniqlo. It was featured in my favorites of the year, if I'm not mistaken, of 2021. And it's still my favorite. I love, love, love this. I didn't think I was going to reach for it all that much. I bought it mostly just to, oh, it's a layer of warmth, but I actually wear it as a piece that I really love and enjoy to wear. Um, super inexpensive. A lot of you have been asking me questions about this. I think this gray is gorgeous. They also have a darker one, which I'm thinking of getting, but I don't need it. So I'm trying not to spend money because I will only be wearing these now for the next couple of months maybe, and then I'm putting them into storage. Hopefully, fingers crossed, um, spring will come. I also have a new, um, cardigan that I've added to my wardrobe from another stories that I've been enjoying so much. I bought this, I think at the beginning of January or at the end of December. And I think it was a great, great purchase. I will link it below. They don't have a lot of size left um, on the website. Uh, just for reference, I got them both in size medium. Um, but yeah, I just love it so much. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, cardigan with a lot of detail. It does have different tones in there, which will complement different tones if I add more color to my wardrobe. I know some of you want me to add color. Maybe I will. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, I just love it so much. And I wanted to uh, feature this one in this video because I've been reaching for it also a lot. Next, I have a dress from Cause, which I have been reaching for so much. Um, I reach for this one a lot, and I also have one in navy, which I reach for. But this is my most recent one. And if I tell you I've been wearing it at least a couple of times a week, that's how much I actually love it. I wear it with a cardigan. I wear it with a jumper on top. Sometimes if it's too hot, I just remove that in the office. And I really, really love the simplicity. I like the fabric, the way it sits on my skin, on my body, better saying. It's very flattering. I think this cut, is a really nice cut for us ladies who, for example, me, I don't have a lot of curves. I feel like this dress gives me a little bit, like a little waist, if that makes any sense. It's not overly tight on the waist, but then it just skims over the body. Um, and it's one of my favorite dresses at the moment. I feel like I will be adding more dresses to my 
um, not buying more, but like to my capsule wardrobe to add more because in the past few years, I was only wearing trousers, trousers, jeans, jeans. And I feel like in the past few months, I've been really enjoying wearing dresses and I feel it's because I really love the design and the style of these. Next, I have these trousers from Zara, which I am so happy that I've decided to repurchase them. One, because I love the design and the tone, but also because I find it quite versatile even though we are in the colder months. So I have been wearing these ones as well a lot. And I style it with my cardigans. It goes with everything. I can style it with the gray one. I can style it with the beige one. So it's quite versatile. And I just feel like the design of them, the cut is very, very flattering. But I have to say, um, and stress this, I find that Zara sizing is very, very awkward. I can try all of these trousers in different shades and they will all fit differently. The camel shade in size large doesn't fit me, it's too big. It feels like it's an extra large. Whereas if I try the medium, it will fit okay. And then if I try the medium from these ones, it's a little bit too snug, but the large fits me perfectly. And that's the reason why sometimes I don't shop in Zara because I find that their sizing is a little bit off. So is H&M. But when I find a little gem in there that works really well for me, I always jump on it. So these are also going to be great as a transitional piece for the spring time and even in the summer. So I'm really happy that I added them to my wardrobe because like I said, I've been wearing them a lot. Another favorite of mine has to be this car from Anna the Stories. I also got this in the sale. They usually retail for 55 pounds, but they are made of 100% wool. They're big, they're thick, but I actually got it for less than 24, if I'm not mistaken, so a great discount there. I already have this in a different tone, which I love, but I wanted to get the gray one because like I said before, I've been gravitating towards gray tones a lot. And I've been reaching for this so much. I always wear a scarf. Here in London can be very, very cold in the morning. And I always feel very cold on my neck. And I feel like a scarf definitely helps me feel protected the entire day. But this scarf is so amazing in feel. It keeps me nice and warm, it's super cozy. I'm really sorry if I sound repetitive, but I just love this and I'm a creature of comfort. If I really love something, I reach for it nearly every day. So this is one of my favorite scarves at the moment. And I know even in winter to spring, I can wear this possibly just on top of a sweater just to keep myself nice and cozy. And last but not least, my favorite footwear of this month has been these boots right here. I am obsessed with them. They are so comfortable. The leather is so, so soft. Um, I bought these in the sale, so unfortunately they're not available anymore. However, Anna the Stories does have a style that is very, very similar to these. Instead of being an almond toe, they're just a little bit, they're not pointy, but they're a little bit more narrow, but they're nearly exactly the same. Um, and the shade is also very, very similar. On the website, it looks like it's the same, but I'm not entirely sure if it is. So I'll link those for you guys below. I just find them very, very nice. I can wear them with a dress, with trousers, with jeans. Um, and like I said, they're very, very comfortable. They haven't given me any blisters. Like the leather is super soft. And I've raved before about another story's footwear. I find that their boots are very, very good value for money, especially if you buy them in the sale because you always get maybe 30% off, sometimes even 60% off. So keep your eyes peeled or when you walk into their store, always go to the shoe section. They always have some promotions going on. So favorite, favorite of mine. And I know these are going to be a nice transitional piece as well from winter to spring. So we've reached the end of today's video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a good thumbs up and a comment below letting me know what your thoughts are about the pieces and things that I've spoken about in this video. And also let me know if you wanna continue seeing a monthly update of my favorites. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video.